Just a decade ago, for the first time, SOFIA took to the air and made its first observations. The acronym SOFIA stands for the Stratospheric Observatory for Infrared Astronomy and is a project run by NASA. The problem with infrared astronomy is that a great deal of infrared light is absorbed by the moisture in the atmosphere. Certainly, some infrared radiation penetrates since we use infrared telescopes on the ground. The difference is that you can achieve a resolution and clarity not available to those telescopes by getting your instrument high into the stratosphere, well above most of the moisture, and gathering a much larger portion of the infrared frequency band. SOFIA does just that by putting a telescope in the side of a modified Boeing 747 jet that flies at an altitude of around 40,000 feet. Join us as we look at some incredible space discoveries by the world's largest flying observatory. Number 11, hiding in the dust. Lying between us and the center of the Milky Way galaxy is a large collection of interstellar gas and dust, which obstructs the view. Due to Sophia's infrared capabilities, we now have generated high resolution, detailed images of the galactic core where our galaxy's black hole lives. This is the best view we have created to date. Number 10, Silhouettes in the Dark. In June of 2015, the planet Pluto passed between a distant star and Earth, casting a shadow on our planet. In and of itself, not that impressive a feat, but it offered Sophia the opportunity to study Pluto's atmosphere for the first time in detail while it was backlit by the star's light. The problem is that Pluto's shadow is incredibly tiny, and being in its path is almost unheard of for a telescope. Put a telescope on a plane, however, and suddenly you can position the telescope in the shadow and keep it there long enough to get a complete reading. Knowing the star's spectrum intimately made it easy to interpret the results of the observation. Since the New Horizons probe was due to arrive for a very speedy flyby of Pluto, in July of 2015. This gave a chance to obtain some preliminary data so the probe could make maximum use of its extremely limited observation window. Number 9. The first multi-element molecule. The majority of atoms created consequent to the Big Bang were hydrogen and to a lesser degree helium. They were in the ratio of 92 to 8 respectively or 75 to 25 by mass. The very first heteronuclear molecule to arise, therefore, was suggested to be helium hydride, the strongest possible acid. It was first created in a laboratory in 1925, though theorized as the first molecule comprised of more than one substance since the 1970s. Sophia finally detected it recently in April of 2019. Number 8. When Worlds Collide a system known as BD plus 2307 sits some 300 light years away. The Spitzer Space Telescope spotted some initial indications and SOFIA has collected new information that will likely help astronomers confirm and understand what a planetary collision entails between two rocky bodies. SOFIA has confirmed residue that's too warm to be original material from the system formation, indicating that such a collision actually occurred. Since Earth's moon was very probably formed by a collision between the early Earth and a Mars-sized planetary body, the remnants of such a collision at BD plus 2307 can aid us in understanding if our Earth-Moon theories are also correct. Number 7. Polarizing Results Active galaxies shoot out collimated or parallel jets of gas offering the strongest evidence of the existence of supermassive black holes in galactic centers. However, not all of them do. An instrument aboard SOFIA called the Hawk Plus, or High Resolution Airborne Wideband Camera Plus, has given us a new tool to examine the magnetic phenomena that are not visible in either visible light or radio light because those wavelengths are too short and too long, respectively. Infrared light, on the other hand, penetrates the dusty material relatively easily. 
the Hawk Plus allows us to use polarized infrared light, letting us see the magnetic fields surrounding the cores of active galaxies for the very first time. These are part of the phenomenon that confines dust into a torus shape, which feeds the black hole. Number 6. Low Activity Galaxies Without the appropriately shaped magnetic fields, a galaxy doesn't have the high ejection rate via collimated jets of gas. Our own galaxy is fairly quiet in comparison to an active galaxy, despite having a rather large black hole of its own. SOFIA will help us understand that difference. Initially, it seems that our magnetic field works to prevent dust and gas from entering the black hole, the opposite of an active galaxy. Instead, it steers it into an orbit around the black hole rather than into the black hole, like the majority of galaxies. Number 5. Eridani is fascinating. In science fiction, the constellation Eridani, the river, pops up frequently because of the closeness to Earth of many of its stars. For example, 40 Eridani is the home of Vulcan in the Star Trek universe, and its neighbor, Epsilon Eridani, was the setting for Babylon 5. Sophia was examining Epsilon Eridani and found a younger version of our own solar system. Complete with a gas giant right where Jupiter sits in our system, and an asteroid belt within its orbit again, just like our own system. This suggests that asteroid belts are an intrinsic part of what happens in a system when a gas giant coalesces. There is an outer asteroid belt too, suggesting that it has another gas giant or two further out, equivalent to Uranus and Neptune. Studying this younger version of ourselves ought to give us some very useful insights into how our own system evolved. Number 4. Exodus Part 2 The interstellar medium is composed of gas and dust. Now it turns out, through magnetic imaging by the Hawk Plus, that some galaxies are ejecting enough material into the intergalactic void to create 50 to 60 million sun-like stars. Even more interesting is the wick-like behavior of the ejecta dragging the galaxy's magnetic field along with it in a 1,000-plus light-year-long distortion. We see similar distortions when Earth's magnetic field is impacted by coronal mass ejections from our Sun. The difference is this occurring on a galactic scale, billions of times larger. Number 3. Making Metals Only stars of the very large variety can create elements beyond iron. When stars die in nova or supernova fashion, they spread the wealth of the elements they have created over their lifetimes, but the super-powerful death throes also create all of the elements beyond iron to the periodic table. Without these titanic deaths, our universe wouldn't exist as we know it, though neither would we, so that probably doesn't matter. Sophia has isolated one supernova explosion from 10 millennia ago that created enough material for creating an Earth-sized planet 7,000 times over. That would seem to be a pretty good legacy for an expiring star. Much better than a statue in the town square. Number 2. Stars condense out of stellar gas and dust, reach the ignition point of hydrogen fusion, and then spawn a solar wind that clears the remaining gases out of the system. The heavier particles resist coalesce and become planets Sophia has found that in a dense stellar nursery, there is a confounding effect caused by newborn stars. Using the German Receiver for Astronomy at Terahertz Frequencies Instrument, or GREAT for short, they have found that baby stars want to be the center of attention. Their solar wind acts to blow away gases from almost stars nearby, halting their formation. This obviously isn't deliberate, but may explain why there are so many brown dwarfs. These undersized wannabes got robbed early in life by a sibling that matured first. Number 1. Life from Nebulae Speculations have leaned towards intense UV radiation breaking down molecules. On Earth, diminished UV may have provided the energy for organic molecules to form in the first place. In open space, it would be too much and would destroy such molecules. Except Sophia seems to have shown the contrary. Using the first light infrared test camera, 
aka flight cam, and the faint object infrared camera for the Sophia telescope, aka forecast, they examined organic molecules forming in a nebula. The two different frequencies, along with other historical data, allowed them to calculate molecule sizes at several distances from the newborn young star. The ones nearest the new star were much larger and more complex. The smaller molecules were destroyed, but medium-sized molecules were provided enough energy to join and increase in size. Amazingly, radiation caused an overall growth rather than destruction. This could be the source for life. Thank your lucky stars! If you liked this video, please click that thumbs up button and then check out this next video that you might find interesting. Thanks for watching.